Hey everyone, because of the nature of this video and the current events that are going on in America, which I will not mention by name because I fear that if I do so, the algorithm will take this video down, I just wanted to address something. There's a lot of serious stuff going on, and this video specifically was meant to be a love letter to a community that is now currently in a pretty scary situation, as well as pretty much all women in America. And so I just wanted to step in here and say, well, there's nothing that I can particularly do in this moment. I am here for everybody, and this community is here for everybody. This video is meant to be a topic about how the TTRPG community is one of love and acceptance and support for everybody. And I just really want to make that clear that that is very important to me, and it's very important to everybody who I have talked with. And I just want you all to know that while this is a very scary time, there are people to lean on, there are people to be here for you, and I hope that my community can be one of those. This is a time where we need to try to love each other, regardless of what side or what you care about. If we're trying to love each other, that will lead to a better place, but we have to consider what is better for everybody not just ourselves. Enjoy the video, and now more than ever, please play your role and do what you need to to make the world your own. If one were to look at the stereotypical D&D &D game about 20 years ago, it would be something very different than what you expect today. Back then, you would expect a bunch of, well, nerdy white males sitting in a basement, wasting away their lives, trying to kill an imaginary dragon and rolling dice. Today, however, it's much different. The stereotypical game of D&D is a bunch of diverse people creating a fascinating story and having an awesome time. In fact, D&D has become much more mainstream, as have TTRPGs in general. But why did that happen? How did that occur? And more importantly, is it a good thing? Spoiler, yes, it is. Let's talk about it. So this is not the first time that I've broached on this kind of topic, and I understand one thing and I always make sure to disclaim it first. I am a heterosexual, white passing male. I understand that. And so anything that I say should be taken with a little grain of salt. That being said, almost all of the people in my D&D games and most of the important people in my life are a part of the LGBTQ, the LGBTQ plus community. Or the Alphabet Mafia if that's still cool to say. I, the last time I said that, that got me cool points, so I, I'm still running with it. The point is, it, most of the people in my life are a part of that community, and so it remains something incredibly important to me. And I think it deserves topics and discussion. Whether I am a heterosexual male or not, the point of this video is not for me to throw my opinion where it's not needed. Instead, it's to highlight something that I think genuinely deserves recognition and support. And that's the idea of who plays D&D. Now, like I said, the previous stereotype of D&D was exactly what I described. It was nerdy and sometimes considered satanic, but the point was is it wasn't cool and it wasn't a good thing. If you played D&D, it was genuinely considered to be a very well, not exciting thing, and it really brought a lot of stereotypes with it. Who are those people? Those are the RPGers. We've been trying to get them thrown off campus for years, but they're just too popular. But these days, it's just so diverse and wide, and so many people are welcoming to the whole topic, but how did that happen? It's a few different things, I think. One is the idea of this sensationalized D&D that started going out on the internet. Things like Critical Role and Dimension 20 started really spreading out these types of stories. But I want to make it clear that one of the reasons that those stories took off was not because they had a lot of really cool actors playing D&D. Don't get me wrong, that was a part of it. But I legitimately think the most important part was that those groups really focused on providing diversity. Now there's been a lot of criticism thrown at Critical Role in the past because of this idea that they don't have a lot of diversity and yeah, their friend group does not have a particular amount of diversity, but that has not stopped them from pushing for it constantly and bringing more people onto the show. And Dimension 20 is fantastic when it comes to diversity. And the real thing is those shows treated it as something that was obligatory not something to be pandering. And that is the largest reason of why I think that the community as a whole, the LGBTQ plus community, has brought so much incredible attention to TTRPGs is because none of the diversity was ever obligatory. As D&D went on, more and more race options, more and more class options, more and more worlds began to develop, 
and there was diversity just obligatorily in there. I mean, think about it. When the Player's Handbook came out for 5th edition, Tiefling was one of the main races, and we all know the stereotypes that Tieflings now have, but it shouldn't be surprising. I mean, really, brightly colored individuals who were generally ostracized from society and had powerful magic generally deep within them that was just waiting to come out? I mean, is it really surprising that that attracted a certain crowd? And as time went on, D&D and tabletop games in general just provided more and more options to be diverse. Come play a large orc or a thin orc. Come play a human or a dwarf or an elf, or you can play a wanti. You can play a grung. I mean, there was so much option and it eventually came down to, you can be whatever you wanna be and go be a hero. And it should not be surprising that that specific idea attracted a community of people who wanted to just be themselves and make a better change in the world. Truthfully, when looking at that kind of community, I'm shocked that the tabletop RPG scene didn't find them sooner. But I mean, it makes sense. As the internet started getting more popular and as those shows started to appear, they were able to find more people like them and then, well, find tabletop games. And I'm very happy that they did. I'll be honest. I try and put a lot into my channel of making sure that diversity and including those groups is important. And people know that it's important to me. And those people have been some of the most amazing viewers that I have. I frequently involve myself in many different TTRPG community spaces. And anytime that I get to talk with people from the Alphabet Mafia, it's truly wonderful. And I enjoy it so much. I think that they're an amazing group of people who have done so much for the hobby by making sure that everybody feels included. Everybody can come and play. This space is a space for everyone. We don't need to default to white features for those characters. We don't need to default that, uh, you know, when the characters are humanoid enough looking and they're not like just an apple with legs and arms or whatever, um, you know, uh, let's not default to your Euro European features for anybody, even though our architecture and military stylings are going to be kind of Eurocentric. Um, so that was like a thing that took a, a, was a bunch of awesome conversations about how to make the show as inclusive as possible. But one of the things that makes me the most sad is when looking at it specifically from the point of view of the older generation of D&D players. Now, I have many people on my channel who watch, who are part of the older generation of D&D players who are amazing. And you guys are incredible. I see them involved in communities and topics like this. I see them advocating for people and making sure that everybody feels included. But it's also true that there are a lot of people from that generation who generally just, well, have a very hateful image towards the new people coming to D&D. They are upset, not necessarily about who they are specifically, but about what they represent and what they bring. And I just wanted to discuss that real quick. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I am a heterosexual white passing male, and that's never gonna change. That's just who I am. I'm very confident in it. But that being said, I get to see because of who I am, a lot of the hatred that can come from people like me. And it's very disappointing and harmful. It's really sad because it feels like there are two different sides of the D&D community who just don't mesh together. And I wish that wasn't the case. It's Pride Month and it is a time to celebrate diversity and celebrate all those people who for so long were not able to be who they truly were. And to all of you, I'm so happy for your time. And to everybody like me who finds it difficult to accept them, and that's not saying I find it difficult to accept them, though that was true at one point, I want to make it clear. Tabletop games are a space for everybody. They're a space for us to explore who we are, to explore who each other are, to meet each other, to love each other, to have fun, to have an amazing time, to laugh, cry, to live life together. And I don't feel like that is a space that deserves to have anything tarnished by not accepting each other. Does this mean that you have to just take everybody in your life and accept everything they do? No, you never should do that. Always continue to think critically. But if you are thinking critically, then you should also be considering that everybody is human and everybody deserves this space and we should all be able to have fun. And to everybody in the LGBTQ plus community who has been so amazing and has helped me feel so welcomed and also helped me understand a lot more of what you guys go through, thank you. And welcome to the channel. I hope that you guys can find an awesome space here. I think this game is amazing and it's an incredible equalizer because when you come to a D&D table, you all play a character and we're all there to tell a great story. And the intention is for us to all be different. And that is truly something worth celebrating. Happy Pride Month, everybody.
This video wouldn't be possible without the incredible beautiful bastards over on our Patreon. I'd like to give an additional very personal thank you to the Divine Bastards Big D the Cool Guy, BKBW, Clark Smith, Diet Blue, Duplicolor, Frostios, Manifestering, Noctua, Rhea Rose, Rocky, Sorit, Supreme Court, Tidai, Void Mystic, Volpe Nico, and Zombies Were People Too. We wouldn't be able to do what we do without you guys, and you mean the absolute world to us. Keep being beautiful, keep being amazing, and as always, make the world your own.